cone of confidence or the cone of confusion. So I live in South Florida, I've been there for over two decades, and I think about the cone a lot, probably more than most people should, because I have a love-hate relationship with the cone that I've had for 20 years now. There's times when I'm like, oh, the cone is so great, and I'm like, oh, the cone is so bad, it's working against the message, the message we're trying to get out. So that's basically my motivation behind this talk, because social science studies show the public often misunderstands what the cone represents. The cone has changed little in its concept over the past 20 years, and there have been no changes related to what creates the misunderstandings. My goal is to try to make a better cone-like graphic. So there's the cone, hasn't changed that much. Of course, it has gotten smaller, which is a good thing because that means that the skill from the National Hurricane Center has improved. The Hurricane Center has gotten better and better and better at predicting where storms are gonna go. This graphic here is very similar to that graphic right there. The error trend over the past, what, 30, 40 years right there. This one was over the past five years. Also, there's no more skinny line on the cone. Now there's some discussion at previous conferences, well maybe bring the skinny line back, maybe that would help what's going on with the cone. So that disappeared of course after Hurricane Charlie where uh, Max Mayfield famously said in 2005, a graphic, this graphic, don't focus on the skinny black line. And I was, I was thinking, don't show the skinny black line, we won't focus on it. The cone's everywhere in the media, of course, uh, many of the media outlets use it or a version of it. Uh, IBM uses it as well as uh, Barron's and just about everybody and in South Florida, you can even get the cone on your phone. So uh, that's <clears throat> great, except the problem is, is that maybe we shouldn't be so focused on this version of the cone. So let's talk about the definition. The cone, of course, is where the center of the storm or hurricane is expected to be two thirds of the time based on the previous five year skill of the National Hurricane Center. The cone does not change its size based on confidence. If the Hurricane Center knows that the storm is gonna go exactly this point, the cone is still one size. If the Hurricane Center says uncertainty is high about where the storm is gonna go, the cone is still the same size. The cone does not change its size based on the intensity of the storm or the size of the storm. Whether it's a huge storm or a small tropical depression, the cone is still the same size. Research, and there was plenty of it, especially when the cone first came out, it uh, says that the public relies heavily on the cone to make their decisions. Many folks will wait for the cone to see where the cone is to decide what they're going to do next. Also, the public sees themselves as either in or out of the cone and will make decisions based on that. And, and in fact, so much so that even my own uh, former TV station, they said, can you zoom in on the cone right where the edge is so we can see who's in and out? And I said, no, we can't. Also, the public sees the cone sometimes as the storm size. The bigger part of the cone must mean a bigger storm. The smaller part means the storm is smaller. And also the public sometimes thinks the cone is the storm. So if the, and also there's one finding that says if the public experiences tropical storm winds, they feel like they've been hit by the hurricane, whether they've been hit by hurricane winds or not, they've been hit. So there, there's a lot of confusion. There's a lot of misunderstanding, but why is that? Is it, is it the fault of the National Hurricane Center? No, because their, their forecasts are getting better. Is it the fault of the public? I would say no, I think the, the fault or issue, or I, I hate to place blame, but I think the, the, the issue lies within this right here, because we're talking about the center of the tropical cyclone. The center is a point. How big is a point? I'm not gonna do Eulerian or Lagrangian. How many dimensions is a point? One, right? And on a map, it's an X, Y coordinate, or as we use it, it's a latitude longitude. So basically the cone represents a temporal or time-based and spatial forecast for a point, not a storm, not something big or small, one point. And I think that would work if we could forecast or if they were long enough duration tornadoes, especially on this scale of a map, a tornado would be a good point to move along, but a storm is much bigger than a point. And so what we say, and it's kind of given away here, 
uh, this, this banner at the top that says the cone contains the probable path of the storm center, that point, but does not show the size of the storm. Hazardous conditions can occur outside of the cone. Well, the first thing I thought was, that's kind of like one of those robotic, robotic factories where the arm is swinging around and doing things. And you know where to stand and where not to stand because of the safety tape. And the, the banner might say, you know, the OSHA wording, hazardous conditions can extend outside of the safety tape. The robotic arm may pick up something, so then it extends further. And I thought, well, how do you fix that? Well, make the safety tape bigger, right? Incorporate the extent of all moving objects, not just where the uh, robotic arm is. I also thought it's important to know where the center is going because and this is what they call a V-blade uh, uh, bulldozer here, where it's, it's kind of split in half. Obviously, you don't want to be on the leading edge of it, where that point is, but you really don't want to be on the edges either. You want to know where they're going to, because you're going to get run over if you're anywhere in the path of this, whether you're in the center or along the sides. So with any solution or with any problem, I always like to think of a solution. What, what can we do to work around this? <clears throat> So one of the ways that we, we have available to us in the weather community is um, being able to plot the wind speed radii. They're quadrants, they come out, it looks something like this, 34, 50, and 64 knot winds. Here's a shameless plug of me during uh, Irma, using it to show South Florida. And this comes from a graphic that the Hurricane Center produces called the Forecast Advisory. And there's the initial point right there, latitude and longitude, and the extent of the tropical storm storm and hurricane force winds, and then that goes out through 48 hours with the hurricane force winds. Then after that, in the forecast, there's no more hurricane force winds, just tropical storm winds and storm winds. And then at 96 and 120 hours, days four and five, there's no forecast for the wind radii. And so what you can do in the weather system is you can interpolate that wind radii. So now you've got the size of a storm, if you're moving it along the Hurricane Center forecast track, you can see the red there in the middle that indicates the hurricane force winds, yellow, the extent of the tropical storm winds. We're at day two here, 48 hours, watch what happens to the middle because there's no more hurricane wind information after that. It looks like it shrinks, but it doesn't. It's just not available anymore. Now coming up on day four, 96 hours, there's no more information. So if you go beyond this point here, you've got nothing. So there's limitations, there's drawbacks to this. Uh, it's a one minute speed, it's sometimes unrepresentative, it exaggerates the wind speed and intensity. Uh, it's too big and too strong. It's better a marine tool, it doesn't work well over land because of friction. And the hurricane wind radii, of course, only since 48 hours, tropical storm winds only up to 72, no four and five day position. So I thought, well, and there's no swath, there's nothing that shows where it's gonna go. So back to Irma, I thought, here's this big storm. What if we could take that big storm and move it along the track and kind of create like a wind swath, something that looks like this is the area that's going to be swept out by the tropical storm conditions in the hurricane? So it looked like that. Well, you can do this, except you would have to hand draw it because there's no weather system that we currently have in the broadcast community that does that automatically. And nobody is hand drawing this at 1058 when the advisor is just coming in and you're on in two minutes. So I thought there's gotta be a better way around that. So then I went into the wind speed probabilities and I found a way that if you can just threshold the 33% or more, just using one color, uh, and this is basically where areas experience tropical storm conditions at least a third of the time. And for now we'll call it the thread cone just for a term that I can use here. It, it's based on the wind speed probability, which looks like this. This is from El and you can see it looks like all of Florida is gonna get hit and especially the west coast of Florida. But if we lop off everything over 33, per, under 33%, and leave only the 33% or greater in there, you get this kind of effect where the yellow area just indicates the tropical storm conditions. You can see it doesn't extend inland, and there's the outline of the cone that goes up like that. So here's some examples. This is Elsa earlier in its life. It's uh, in the Atlantic, about to press into the Caribbean. And you can see the tropical storm conditions extend outside of the cone, especially early in the storms, track span there, because the cone is much smaller, because the certainty is much, uncertainty is much less. And then you can see how it goes up, starts to make a turn there. And the tropical storm winds, they decrease a little bit in size because the storm 
is farther out, so the odds of tropical storm conditions are lower, but um, they also represent kind of a smaller area there because the storm was forecast, forecast to have land interaction. This is East Aias. Uh, this, uh, of course, was a, a, not only a challenge to forecast, but also to pronounce. Here's the lopsided wind field there. You can see that to the south of the track, which is typical for westward moving storms, there's no or very little extent of tropical storm winds. But to the north of the cone, there is a larger area. And in fact, at one forecast cycle, the Hurricane Center's forecast was for it to strengthen some when the wind field expanded to the north and then weaken some later on and the wind field contracted somewhat. The cone didn't change its size at all. It moved along in time, but the storm, as it was forecast to change, that tropical storm threat cone that I call it, uh, expanded and contracted. Laura, Laura, um, a great example of a big storm, lots of hurricane watches and warnings. Here is the cone, and you can see the cone goes right inside of the hurricane warning area. And so if you were playing the am I in or out of the cone game, you were really, really in trouble. So if you use the threat cone area, it looks something like this. And you can see because it was such a big storm, the extent of tropical storm conditions went almost to the mouth of the Mississippi, which overlapped very nicely with the Hurricane Center's tropical storm warnings. And then because they produce also a wind speed probability for hurricane conditions, you can do it for hurricane conditions as well. And it looks something like this where and I use a 10% threshold for that. And it also goes very nicely inside the Hurricane Center's a forecast for hurricane conditions. So um, this, this graphic is good. Uh, it, it does have some, some, uh, some idiosyncrasies that you have to work with. It's a little bit uh, stronger when storms are too large, a little bit too large of an area. There's a climatological bias. Sometimes it needs to be tuned because the 33% doesn't work that well. Uh, it over-exaggerates the wind field over land, but that changes next year uh, coming up. And uh, I suggest we continue, if we use it, to display the legacy cone, that old cone, because people were kind of tied to that uh, for now, but we're just calling it the threat cone. So further work, uh, improvements in the wind speed probability. Uh, Andrea Schumacher yesterday, Andrea Schumacher, she had a great presentation uh, talking about the changes that are coming in wind speed probability, which would change that. Any new iteration or version of the cone, of course, I think needs a legacy cone, just because it's so ingrained in our society. Uh, many social re uh, research projects focus on remaking the colors of the cone and all of these things like this. But I don't think that's the answer because what I think we're doing is we're using a wrench to hammer a nail here. We're using the wrong tool to convey a message. The cone is doing what the cone is supposed to do. It's supposed to show where that point, that one dimensional point is expected to be 66% uh, of the time based on the last five years, but it's a point. So the cone is doing what it's supposed to do. We need to create a graphic that doesn't treat a storm like a point. We need to create a graphic that treats a storm with uh, width and breadth and all of that. Thank you very much. Thanks, Craig. This is great. and I. I have a comment and then a question. The comment is, I think this is a great example of how we can be in line with what the Hurricane Center is doing, because these are all based on Hurricane Center products, but communicate specifically to our audiences in a situation where the previous tool, the, the cone, which sort of, you know, it's there, it's easy, we can throw it up, and so it gets used a lot, but it also gets misinterpreted a lot, and I love the fact that you had, you, you brought receipts, which is great. Um, my question is, the storm surge guidance is all based on a 10% exceedance, uh, and you use that for hurricane force winds, but not for tropical storm force. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Yeah. So I think it's based on the, the risk of impact. So with, with wind, in tropical storm winds, you're probably not going to lose your roof. You're probably going to have power outages and tree damage and things like that. But so I feel like the threshold can be set higher uh, because you don't need to be more proactive with tropical storm conditions. Hurricane conditions, on the other hand, it may require, if you're in a mobile home or a weaker structure, to evacuate. It may require you to put up shutters, and so you have a lower tolerance to, to, uh, to getting hit. And so, there, therefore, I think you have a, a greater tolerance to false alarms. And that's with storm surge as well. Once you get above that three feet, you don't want to take any risks, you know, uh, well, it was a one in 10, but it, you know, it came, stuff like that. So, so the thresholds are kind of based on the destructive potential of what, what you're talking about. 
All right, thank you very much. One last meme for everybody. Boom, Isaac, 2012. Thank you, Craig, that was great.